So, but really we're, we're, we're doing this because we're, we're looking past college for y'all. Um, and so I want to talk, we want to talk a little about, about, about a networking tool uh, called the informational interview. Um, and I, I've never actually done a, like a, a Google search for this term. I have no idea what that would, would turn up. Um, <laughs> but this is something that, that, uh, that I learned in, in DC. And when people first started describing it to me, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, the informational interview. It was just, you know, an informational interview, right? Um, so that from the definite to the indefinite and the upper, the, the proper noun to just the regular old noun, right? Um, but I, there is, is incredible value in this as, as, a, as a tool such that I, I think it, it warrants the, uh, the definite article and the, the proper Ooh. noun, yeah. Um, and so I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about kind of what, what, what they are and, and, uh, and why you might do them. Um, and I wanna just formatting on the fly. And then we're gonna talk about how to actually carry one off. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna interview Dr. Anderson. <gasps> Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't actually know that yet, um, or he doesn't know what I'm about to interview him about. And so you'll, it'll, well, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. And then we'll give you a chance to just, to just Very practice fun. a little bit with each other. Um, and there, we don't have an assignment associated with this particular professional development tool. Um, we, we brainstormed some options of how that would look. Um, but really what, what we'll leave you with instead is just like the strong recommendation that you try it. And maybe we can um, make a little Canvas support discussion group. And if people try it, we can then come back and maybe do a little class time to, to, uh, to do in a post-op and, and seeing how, how they go. So an informational, an informational interview, and by the end of this, um, informational will be like visualization. I won't be able to say it anymore. Um, so, so what is this? So this is basically a way of getting to meet someone whose connection to you might potentially someday be valuable in your career. So if you are interested in working in environmental consulting, this is a way for you to meet environmental consultants. So what it is not is an interview to get a job. It is not an interview to ask for a job. It is not an interview to ask if someone's hiring. It is an interview where you can get information about people and career paths that seem interesting to you. So as an example, we'll go with environmental consulting. Say you wanna get a job at a local environmental consulting firm. You happen to know that some ESRM alums have graduated from our program and gotten jobs. You connect with them through Dr. A or myself or another class. And you just, so say that's where Sean is now, you just reach out and you'd say, I'd love to have an informational interview with you. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in the career path that you've taken. And I'd love to just ask you a few questions about how you got to where you are and what you like about it. I think hearing this from you would be really beneficial to me as I sort of contemplate the next steps in my career. And you're gonna, you're gonna pair it a little bit with like, like the pitch for yourself, the elevator pitch we're gonna talk about later. But you are essentially asking these people to talk to you about themselves, which is everyone's favorite topic. <laughs> um, and so why would you do it this way well it, it turns out I mean, a is everyone's favorite topic but it's also really un, it's really like non-threatening it's a little bit ego stroking um, and it's not contingent on anything other than maybe a little bit of their time um, right so if instead you email and say hey i'm really interested in environmental consulting like i'd love to know if there are like any jobs at your company something like that if they're not hiring or they don't know you or they're in a bad mood or they're busy, they'll just say, no, sorry. 
But if you instead say, I'd love to learn more about you, I'd love to talk to you about your choices, your career, what you like about your job, people are much more likely to make time for that. Um, and they'll make time for that whether they're hiring or not. So in certain cases, the interview might end with them saying, and you know what? We're not hiring now, but maybe we're hiring next month. Like, let's keep in touch. Or they might say, we're not hiring, but my buddy at this other company is hiring. Let me connect you with them, right? And so because you haven't come to them asking for anything other than a little bit of them ta their time to talk about themselves, you create this opportunity for that, the second part thing to happen, right? Like it doesn't just end with a, with a no, we're not hiring, therefore it's not worth their time. Um, and so this becomes valuable because you can, it enables you to grow your network with people who are doing or in the place you'd like to get to someday. It could be next year. It could be five years from now. You might have less luck shooting to have an informational interview with someone who's 25 years ahead of you, right? You want to go to the environmental consulting firm and there's 500 people that work there. Don't start with the CEO, right? start with someone who's fairly new, fairly kind of peer mentorish like you, right? That's a much more logical place to start. But the result's gonna be that you're gonna, you're gonna grow your network um, because you're gonna, you're gonna develop a connection with this person. One of the things you always ask at the end is, could you recommend a few colleagues that I could, and help me connect with them so that I can have conversations with them too, right? You're collecting information about these possible careers and gradually you're gonna, you're gonna grow your network like this. Um, so what, what questions, does, does this resonate with anyone so far? Do they don't have any experience trying anything like this? The only face I see is Dr. A. His brow is furrowed. Ooh. How, unfor how unfortunate. Uh, I haven't done this with anyone like professionally, but my, the doctor my dad works for, I talked to his daughter. She's getting her master's right now. And so we were able to have a conversation about what she's doing, what career path she's going through. And that was really helpful. It was really interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, um, grad school is a great way to start thinking about it. Like, you know, like it doesn't just have to be jobs, right? Thanks, Lex. Like you're interested in a graduate program at a university nearby, find some other graduate students, offer to buy them a cup of coffee, you know? Three dollars fifty cents. You'll get a lot of wisdom about that program, about that. Three dollars fifty cents. That's a cheap coffee. That must not be Starbucks, but that's um, good. Uh, oh, I won't mean it's certainly not a beer, right? Um, but like, you'll get a lot of information from them in that setting that you would not get if you like went to the website and read about the program or talked to like the admissions people, right? And it's the same thing, right? If you call like. The admissions office and say, I'd like to get a spot in this program. What do I do? It's a, it's a really different, uh, it's a really different tone than if you talk to a student like, hey, I'm really interested in being a student like you in this program. I'd love to know your experiences about it, what it was like, what you think you're going to do with it. I'm trying to figure out if it's the right step for me, right? Um, who else? Thank you for sharing, Alexa. Um, I kind of did a lot of that um, while I was collecting data for my project, since our project isn't really like um, too experimental. It's more of like actually talking to people and gathering data that way. So what I did to collect like information about like water in Ventura, I would like go to the Cayugas Municipal Water District, email someone there, and then have them send me data and then, yeah, connect to other people from there on. But I did that quite a bit. Yep. Chain, chain referral becomes sort of a valuable tool here for like growing that network. It's really, really, can be really, really effective. Um, there, it's one of those things where there's, there's no reason to, um, to, to wait to start doing this. Um, this works if you really have no idea what you want to do, or it works if you know exactly which company you want to work for and which job description you want to have. Um, and it also 
is really great for you at this stage in your career because really soon we're going to make you leave college. You just, you can't stay forever. We're going to kick <laughs> you out the door. Um, and, um, and so now is a good time to be thinking about this. Uh, when I started in DC, I was on a fixed term fellowship. And I think during the last three months of my fellowship, three months, um, I did maybe one or two of these a week, right? Just calling someone up, taking them out for a cup of coffee or a pint um, and just talking about what they did. And it was talking with all those people in DC that made me realize that I didn't want to stay there. Um, uh, other questions, comments, or concerns, and we can talk a little bit just about, uh, about like a, a template for what the interview might look like, and then, and then I do it on time, and then and then I'll 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 try to practice it on Doctor A a little bit, and then I'll try to give you a chance to practice too. Other questions, comments, concerns. So there's, there's, a, there's a few things that, that you want to make sure that you're thinking about. Um, partly it's, it's like the requests and the pitch, right? Because in many cases, you're going to be, you're going to be cold emailing, cold calling people. Um, and so that's where the idea of, of um, having a good pitch for yourself and then a good tone and emphasis on informational, right? You really want it to be clear that you're hoping to have just a casual chat. You can do it over Zoom. You can get them a cup of coffee. All you're really asking is for a few minutes of their time, 15, 20, 30 on the long end. Um, and you'd like to know more about them. You'd like to know more about their career path, what they like and do not like about their position. Um, and the reason you want to know these things is because you're you're really interested in their career path and their career, the jobs that they're the job that they're doing as you consider your own, right? So that the tone is is um, is 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 curious and like maybe like a little bit of ego stroking, um, not over the top. Don't overdo it, uh, but you want you want to learn more about this person and what they do. Why? because it'll help you make your own decisions, right? So the, the tone of that request is really important. You also then need to pitch yourself a little bit, right? I am a senior at Cal State Channel Islands. I'm studying environmental science and resource management. I have experience doing this and this, and it's from those experiences that um, makes me realize that this is not what I want to do. And what I really want to do is, is what you, what is why I've always wanted to be a CPA like you are. Um, no, because you want an environmental science career, right? So, so help connect those dots for them with like two to three sentences about yourself, right? You're not sending them your CV. You're not sending them your, this is not a cover letter, right? You want to give them enough to like pique their curiosity about why someone like you might actually be interested in someone like them. Right, but you don't want to make it onerous. Um, and, and I would say, you guys, it's it might it probably this sounds very awkward, or this sounds maybe very kind of like, oh, that's not me. I'm not. I'm not. I, I get embarrassed or that kind of stuff. It's actually the perfect time to do it right now. It, it does not look. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to look like you're hunting for a job or whatever, right? But I mean, it's, it's like this is the time. You guys are finishing up this part of your life. You're turning to your your next career phase. Uh, it's it's fine to do it any time in your career, right? But if you were a 45 year old person that had been working this job for 20 years, that, that might be a little bit, someone might think, hmm, what is this person trying to get? But, you know, re, just finishing college, recent college graduate, asking someone about their career path, that's a very natural thing. So it might feel awkward for you, but you should understand that from the outside, this, this is a very common um, thing people ask. Um, I said, you don't need to send like your CV or anything like that or your resume. Like sometimes that happens. That's not like they're not going to write you off because you did that. But another thing you can do is make sure that your website is linked in your signature. And then when they're curious and if you write them a nice email, they may well be curious. They can click on that and get and learn a little more about you. 
You know, so that's sort of the request, the pitch of yourself, right? Two really important interview, really element, like without those things, like you're not gonna get to sit down with someone. Um, the interview itself, right? Really, this is intended to be casual. However, not too casual, right? You want to impress them with your professionality, right? Write down some questions in advance, right? Make it clear when you're interviewing them that you're actually working from a real list of questions because you have prepared to have this conversation with them, right? Make it clear that you've done a little bit of research on them, maybe because it's on their company bio, maybe it's because it's on their LinkedIn page, but get some information on them so that you can say, well, when I see you studied you know, marine biology, how did that transfer to the work that you're doing now as a terrestrial site evaluator for firm XYZ, right? A little bit of due diligence. And I'm not talking like, like what you can do in five minutes will make a huge difference to demonstrating to them that you have your shit together. And that is a really important thing that you want them to know about you for some of these later things that might happen, right? Keep it casual, but don't go in with a t-shirt, right? You don't need to put a coat and tie on, but but take it up a notch, even if it's Zoom, right? So what, all, what we've been talking about, sort of in class so far, about sort of your professional self, bring your best professional self um, to, a, to a business casual conversation. Um, uh, oh shoot, what am I leaving out? Um, I guess maybe the last piece of advice that I have is, is, is I have it be authentic, right? The whole point of finding a career is to like find something that like actually will work for you. Um, and so, you know, you're not asking them the questions that you think Dr. A and I think are the important questions. Like you're asking the questions that like, you, like what's important to you, you know? Talk about what they do day to day. Talk about like the work-life balance. Like I really love to travel. Even had the opportunity to travel. I see you've worked at a site here and another site and this other site. Was that part of the same job? Like how 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 might I how might I fold my love of travel into right? Like whatever it is. Like like make sure that it's like authentic to you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say that uh, while this is not a job interview, uh, uh, I should be careful what I say here, but. Uh, there is a job interview going on somewhere vaguely near me and uh and some of the people that were interviewing uh did not have any personality some of the people did not bring their their personality to the table and they also didn't have any follow-up questions so once the sort of formal conversation happened the end which is the time hey tell me about whatever i don't know your hobbies or any questions you have for me or whatever the silence that's that's kind of like a death knell right it's not kind of like that is a death knell right like oh my gosh this person has I, I this person has no personality or this person doesn't have enough to sort of understand what what this whole conversation is about or or they're not curious to ask x y and z um so you should always have a couple a couple of uh you know other questions there that, that if you got tongue tied or something you could toss out and it would be um, conversational. Yeah, because the whole idea is that you're trying to keep this like a casual low key conversation. Yeah. So you don't have to feel tongue tied, right? Like from your perspective, like there's nothing at stake, right? Because you didn't call to say, hey, I'd love to talk about that job that your company's hiring for right now. Right, that's not why you're there. Um, so another really Im Im important part of this is is the ask, right? And and uh, and you're not asking them to hire you. That is not what you're asking. But if you go back to sort of the objective, which is to gradually grow your professional network, the ask is directly tied to that. And the ask is about keeping in touch and being connected with their colleagues, right? And so you want to, in a, uh, 
in, in a in, in an appropriate tone. Say something like, you know, as you're saying, thank you for your time, having great manners. You want to say, I, maybe I'd love to follow up in six or twelve months, something like that, just to update you how it's going, keep in touch, right? You're not asking for anything specific. You're just sort of dangling that out there, and you say, I, and I'd really love to connect with other people that are doing similar work. I'm just trying to collect as many different opinions and stories as possible. Do you have one or two colleagues that you'd be willing to help me connect with? If so, what and what are their names, right? And so like that, that's the ask. The ask is that this relationship does not end forever when you walk out the door. And could you start that process of chain referral? And this last component is the follow-up. Can I say right? real quick? Yeah. I would say, I would say um, and it's, there's a lot of, bad things with the pandemic, a lot of hard things with the pandemic. This is actually one of the one of the gifts, one of the few gifts of the pandemic, right? Which is you can blame the pandemic. Hey, I'd love to follow up with you in six months or nine months and see if as we come out of the pandemic, if if things have changed, right? The, 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 so, the, so that's the excuse, the excuse, I don't know if that's the right term, but, but that's the justification for reaching out, right? It, uh, way easier than if we were just in the in the normal times, whenever those were, um, right. And then you're kind of, uh, yeah, so can I reach out in six months? But by bracketing it to the current conditions, that seems a much more natural um, a request in my, my opinion. Um, Angelica, I'll come back to your question in just a moment. Um, and I'll just sort of um, continue what Sean was saying about the follow-up is that after you have this conversation with them, you damn well better follow up to at the very least, thank them for their time. If you can contrive a way because you like have a mailing address for them at their company to do this with an actual thank you note, one or two sentences on paper, they will remember you forever. Totally, completely. And it, I know it sounds ridiculous Guaranteed. for me to say that, but I, I promise you that it's true. Totally. Because I tell, I tell every generation of students this for the last you know, 12 years that I've been interacting with students and I've seen only maybe two handwritten notes, not maybe two, exactly two. And I remember <laughs> those students, exactly, everything about them. Because no one does this even more, even though it's the smartest damn thing you can do when you're following up. Um, but at the very least, you send them an email, you thank them for their time, you circle back on that follow-up. You know, you mentioned you could connect me with, you know, your, your buddy Joe at, this other company, um, I'd, I hear, I'd, love, I'd be happy to send you an email you could forward to him or whatever, um, but you, you close those loops. If there was anything that they asked you to do, if they said, yeah, you should check out this one website and you'd be like, oh yeah, I'll do that. Like, you know, write that chick down and then go home and do it and say, hey, thanks for recommending really? that I check out that lead building certification thing like that. Like that's totally. really interesting for me. Do you know anyone else who might be involved with that, right? Um, so Angelica, your question about, about follow-up questions, when Dr. A mentioned it specifically, it was in the context of an, of an interview where the panel had a bunch of questions for the candidate. And when they finished the official sort of questions for the candidate, then they say to the candidate, do you have any questions for us? And the candidate, the candidates failed to come through with anything. Crickets. Um, crickets. crickets. So you always want to have something there, but in, in this case, most of the questions are originating from you. Um, and so insofar as there's follow-up, it's you could really your goal here is to have a conversation because that's how you develop connections, right? You're trying to network, you're trying to grow your sort of connections professionally. And if you just sort of go and you wrote, ask them, um, please tell me about your educational career and how it relates to your current job duties. And they tell you some things and you're like, okay, thank you, next question, right? You're not, you're not building rapport, you're not developing connection right you're just collecting information and that's part of the goal but the main goal is you're you're, you're doing this as, as as a way of sort of developing your know um, any any questions about this so far cool um so so I was going to interview Sean um, about um, what it was like to be chair of a small environmental science program. Um, okay. But um, 
I, I think that I would, I would rather give you a chance to just practice this with each other. I think in sort of talking about it, we've given you like a lot of examples of like how to casually like pitch a question and kind of what they're going through. Um, and I, I, I want you to sort of get into this zone of just throwing out questions and sort of like having authentic interests in things. Um, and also meet your classmates. Still only week four, right? We've got plenty of time to get to know each other. Um, and so I'm going to drop uh, this bit in the chat. Oops, wait for it. Can we make 30 random oh. rounds? Um, yeah, that would be great. Um, and there's a, a great um, comment um, from Veronica about the importance of doing like just the littlest bit of background knowledge. She says she did a job interview and the first thing they wanted to know was what she knew about them already. Um, so, um, so sort of assume for the purposes of just like some really casual practice that you're, you're, already, you're already gonna be at the, at the table figuratively um, with the person you're interviewing. Um, but instead of asking, for a job, um, you are looking to acquire a new hobby in your life. You got some spare. <laughs> you, you've got more spare time than you expected. You'd like to take up something new, and so this is just a casual way to practice asking each other about each other. How do you spend your free time? What kind of hobbies are you interested in? Oh, what's that like? How did you get into that? Right. This is your. This is just a way of sort of brainstorming amongst yourselves some ways of asking people about something that they do that's important to them. Um, and so we'll we'll do we'll maybe do two 10 minute rounds of this. So give it some back and forth. Um, but see if you can't come back with some information about some of these new hobbies and whether or not they'd be appropriate for you, right? If there was a quiz after this, it would be, what new hobbies did you learn about? What do they involve? Are they a good fit for you? Yes or no, right? Those are the kinds of questions you'd be answering with this little pre practice mock-up. So the only thing that'll make us a little bit of a hiccup is one of our groups, our, our, our Tidewater Gobi group is in the lab. And so there's three people on one computer. So maybe you two of you guys could talk to each other, but then the third, whoever, maybe they could jump on their phone and just go to the other side of the room right now so that you could jump on so that you could join one of the um, uh, respective uh, groups while while we're uh, finishing the prep here. Um, I'd also ask you guys to please, 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 please practice this for real. So all those things we mentioned before about, you know, close to the screen so people can see you, uh, a little bit of smile as they're talking, a little bit of nodding, you know, that, that sort of positive enforcement um, that that you're actually hearing what the other person is saying. Um, all of that should be what you always do, but this is a perfect chance to model that. Um, and if for some random reason you you happen to jump into a that randomly assigned to you to assigned it did wow assigned That's you to a room that your best bud is in there, uh, just pop on out and ask us, and we'll we'll randomly um, toss you into a different room. Yes, Rihanna swear she's smiling. She's super smiling underneath her mask. Super smile. So yeah, great. Awesome. Um, and with that, unless Dr. Ryman has other suggestions, I guess I'll open the rooms. So uh, let's see what time. To, uh, so I it's a it's uh so we're gonna do 10 minutes. So we'll do the first one. We'll pop out a we'll pop out a um a one minute a, warning. A reminder that it's time to switch. And then we'll pop out a reminder when we're like a minute or two away. And then we'll bring everybody back in in uh, 20 minutes from now. Cool. Any questions? Okay. Opening all the rooms. Um, am I reading this right? We got a lot of one-person rooms. No, never mind. Uh, I think people are joining. So I think there's like one until the other person jumps in, I think. 
I mean, it could be. There could be. We actually are a few. Oh, shit! I might have done that. I might have accidentally clicked. All brick our rooms will close. Oh. Okay. Oh no. That's all good. We'll we'll redo it once they all come back. Um. In. Oh, idiot! Gosh. Um, all good. Do you want to give them sort of ten minutes to just talk with each other in this first round, and then reshuffle the rooms? Yeah. So we'll actually bring them back. We'll give them five minutes. That's like halfway through, and then a close in a minute. Wait. So, but then that way, some people might not have the chance to be both sides. That's that okay. That's okay. Okay. Got a few more seconds left. Because they're kind of learning about each other's hobbies. This is okay. Sorry, I totally screwed the pooch on that. It's all good. Uh, except for all these people that were like, we're not leaving. They're still here. Yeah, okay. that was that was me. I Everybody's back in. We're, we're gonna we're gonna redo the room. Sorry, there's a little logistical thing. So give me give me one second to recreate uh, some rooms. There was a logistical thing, but then I hit the close all rooms button on accident. And it turns out that Zoom doesn't have a cancel to close the rooms button. Just just put my hands up here now. Hey, when I tried joining my room, it logged me off of Zoom. But now I can That's see new. that it says I'm on here twice. Wait a what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, there are two of you. I have no idea how that happened. I'm going to remove one of you. Oh, you're gone. Uh, do the one that has the number in front of it. Well, I did the one that didn't have your face on it. Oh, my God. You're, yeah. not, you're not here anymore, Dorian. You're not here. You're just completely erased. Oh, my God. Okay. Trying it again. Have rooms. Theoretically, it should be two people in each room. If something's weird or if you're only one person, we'll, we'll, we'll check out, maybe move some people. But, but we're going to do 10 minutes. Then we're going to recreate new rooms after 10 minutes. So you're not necessarily going to talk to your bud and then you, you take a turn. So, uh, But that's what's going to happen. Ready, set, ask about hobbies. 10 minutes. Ready, set, go. Um, Dr. A, it looks like it looks like there's a couple. So Suzanne and Michelle, maybe we should shove together. Yeah, you want uh, you, next, you, want, yeah, you do I'll, that since I'll, I'll do that. I'll since do that. last time I touched it, I screwed the whole thing up. I got it. Okay, uh, okay, four forty-five. So go. in nine minutes. Yeah. Okay, let me start my start my watch. Because that's the other thing we always forget to do. Darn you, Zoom. Oh yeah. I said, I think we're recording. Let me turn off the recording. Oh, yeah. Okay.